PV Power Up, serving photovoltaic contractors and integrators with practical information and answers. In this podcast, we're going to illustrate how all the major components of a solar system fit together and get interconnected. Now, in a real system out in the world, it's going to be spread out over a very large area, so it's kind of hard to see the big picture. So what we've done is we've taken the components out of one of our kits and laid them out here in the warehouse so we could see everything in close proximity and then try to connect them up. So the major components you have, you have the solar modules, which in this case are unisolar, flexible, amorphous. We've got a DC disconnect, an inverter, and an AC disconnect. So what we want to show is basically how do all these things fit together? Now, the key to your solar system is, of course, the solar panels. And they end up being designed to be connected together in strings. So what we have is showing you roughly a string of five. And the way this works, each module comes with a positive and negative connection. And this is just like batteries in a flashlight, where you put positive, positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, so that you get a string that gives you a certain voltage. The plugs are polarized, so it's hard to mess them up. So you just go positive to negative, positive to negative, all the way down the string. And then at the end of the string, you're going to end up with one positive and one negative that have to go all the way back to the inverter. So for the system we've shown, we have two strings. Now, what's critical about this is the way the voltages add up in the string. If I have too little voltage, the inverter won't turn on. If I have too much voltage in a string because I connected up too many, it'll probably destroy the electronics in the inverter. So again, this is kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It can't be too little, it can't be too much, it's got to be just right. So the kits that we've designed, we've set it up so that depending on the modules and the kilowatt rating that you want, we've got the right string design matched to the inverter that comes in the kit. Now also in our kit, we give you enough of the conductor to get from the roof down to your inverter. So what you'll have is, from that positive and that negative, you'll have polarized connectors. Connect them up. And then you have to run the conductor all the way back down the roof and around to in this case, the DC disconnect. And again, for our other string, we've done the same thing. Connected all the modules up in series, and then brought the two conductors all the way back to the DC disconnect. Now what we normally do when we provide the conductor, these sort of terminals aren't exactly the thing you can run down to a local hardware store and pick up. So we end up giving you one loop of conductor and then you make the cut at the point that you need because we don't know if your positive is closer to the inverter or the negative. Now once you've brought the strings down off the roof to the DC disconnect, you can run the DC over to the inverter. Now in this case, it works out really well for this design of two strings because this inverter can actually take two strings as an input. Some cases you'll have more strings than the inverter can take and you may have to provide a DC disconnect along with a combiner box to get the large number of strings down to a number that can go in the inverter. So from the code required DC disconnect, we run the output wires into the DC input of the inverter. Now, inverter is kind of an odd term for what it does because it's not really inverting DC electricity to AC. The terminology comes from early last century where they needed a lot of DC power to power subways and electric railways. The way they got the DC power is they'd use a converter which took AC power and converted it to DC. But then someone figured out that if you inverted the connection to a converter, that would be taking DC and making it AC. So an inverted converter takes DC to AC, so it's just been shortened to inverter. Not a very common sense term, but that's what we have. Now out of the inverter, we have to run the output wires from the inverter to an AC disconnect. 
And again, the code requirement is we need to be able to turn off the modules if there's an issue up there to work on, and we need to isolate the inverter. So we have to be able to isolate the AC and the DC side for safety and maintenance. Now out of the AC disconnect, we have wires that will come out from here to your local panel that connects to the grid. So normally it would come out of here to an AC meter that you monitor for your solar recs and then into your AC panel. Now in our kits we've shown these disconnects as separate. Sometimes they come as part of the inverter. They'll either look very similar to this, bolted to the inverter side, or you may even find them mounted to the bottom of the inverter. Some things that don't come with our kit, we don't provide a code book. There's a lot of very specific things related to the National Electrical Code that are required. So it's very important that the electricians working on it are up to speed with the latest code your jurisdiction uses. We do provide some basic warning labels, um, warning uh, DC power sources, photovoltaic. There are a lot of uh, label requirements required by the National Electrical Code and it's really up to the jurisdiction exactly what they want to see. So you'll need labels on different disconnects, you'll need labels on your panel, and you could require additional labels depending where you're at. So again, it's very simple of connecting the panels in series. Again, it's got to be the correct string design for the inverter to make sure that you're producing the most power and it's going to work without damaging the equipment. You run each string two conductors off the roof, down to your disconnector combiner box, from there into the inverter, inverter to another AC disconnect, and then into your panel. The other thing I haven't shown is grounding conductors, which will vary depending on your module design, whether it has a metal edge or it's totally plastic or non-conductive, and <clears throat> whether your racking system is listed for grounding or not. So basically in this area you've tried to show very simply how the components go together. We would like to thank our sponsor, Innovative Solar, a national integrator and distributor of solar products and solutions. For more information, visit them on the web at InnovativeSolar.com.